purpose of this video is to show you how to use Excel to um, do your work for you, basically. Excel is part of the Microsoft Office Suite. Um, the top ribbon works very similar to Word and Publisher. The same basic things. You just sort of follow, read, and look for what you want to do. Um, it's a little more powerful in Word. Actually, it's a lot more powerful in Word because it can do formulas as well as just typing and word processing. So the main difference is we have these things called cells in Excel. A cell is a combination of a column and a row. The columns have letters, the rows have numbers. So this right here would be cell G7. In each cell, you can select the cell and start typing. Or if you notice, when I started typing up here on the formula line, it came up here as well. So I can go up here and type in a formula, and it'll do the math for me. So what we're going to use is Excel for the formulas. Now to do our statistics, the first thing we have to do is enter our data. So we're going to go over here into cell C3, and I'm actually going to do cell C uh, B3, and I'm going to type in snow fall, and I want it in inches. I'm going to hit Alt Enter. I'm pushing Alt and Enter at the same time. That returns within the cell, and I want it in inches close parentheses. Then I just simply hit enter and that takes me to the new cell. Now I want this to be centered. Actually I want everything to be centered. So I'm going to click on the top left corner right there. I'm going to hit merge. I don't want to hit merge and center. That would be very bad. I want centered here and I want it centered here. And I also like 12 point font because I have old lady eyes. I want everything on this row. So I click over here on the three, selects the whole row. and I'm going to want that bold. All right, so next I'm going to enter my data. I'm going to enter slightly different data than you so that my information will be a little bit different. You need to do the data that you have on yours. Okay, once you have all of your data entered, you will then um, go through and start doing your calculations. And I'm going to want to calculate mean, median, um, mode, and actually I want to do mean colon, median colon, mode colon, and I skip a couple of underneath mode, and then I'm going to type in range colon, n colon, and standard deviation colon. I'm going to want these bolded, so I hit bold. I don't want that to be doing that. I want it to actually wrap in the cell, so I'm going to hit wrap. All right, standard deviation, and we're going to take and pull that out, and then I'm going to want this to do this. So it looks all sorts of pretty like that. And now I'm going to actually do my math. So to calculate my mean, which is the same thing as average, I hit equals and I type, start typing in average. And hey, look, there's the word average. And it tells me on the screen, returns the absolute, which basically if you read that says is finding the mean. Double click, does a parentheses. I want to find the average of that data, so I select it, close parentheses, hit enter. You've got to hit enter, otherwise you will have issues. You can't just click somewhere else. All of this stuff is going to be numbers, so I go up here and I change that to being a number. I only want these to have one decimal place because my data only has one, so I go up here to decrease decimal, and that locks it at one decimal place. Next I want median, so I'm going to type in median, and I want to find, oops, I hit enter too soon, I need median, double click, parentheses, select my data, close parentheses, enter, and that gives me my median. Next I want mode, so I hit equals mode, and I actually want to make sure if I have multiple modes I'm finding them, so I'm going to do mold multi, double click, select the data I want, close parentheses, enter, now I'm going to go click on this, move it over till I get the plus sign, click and drag. And if you notice, do you see how it starts repeating right here? Once it starts repeating, it means we found all of ours. So our two modes are 8.5 and 6.7. And I can take and delete that one right there. So there are the two modes that we have. And that's how you handle the multi-mode. Next for range, I need to subtract the biggest number from the smallest number. So I go up here, I select all of my data, alright, 
so sorry phone rang um, select my data here I'm going up to where it says data sort click my data has headers that's my header sort and it puts it in order and then right here for my range I hit equals and I want to do my biggest minus my smallest enter and that gives me my range next my n is the number of entries so I do equals count count will count the number of numbers so I select my data parentheses and it counts up the number of numbers and on that one I don't need decimal points. Standard de ugh, I gotta do math for standard deviation. So what you first have to do is find your deviation. Your deviation is your number minus your mean, which remember is a mu, but I don't have a mu on my keyboard, so I'm being lazy and using a u. Uh, that's gonna kick back negative numbers, which will cause problems. So I'm then gonna take that and square it. Shift six gives me a little carrot and that'll take care of my negative numbers. So this is going to equal my mean minus my number. I don't want to type that over and over again, so I want my mean to constantly be the same cell. So the little dollar signs means always go to this cell. Enter. Go up here with a little plus sign, drag it down. And so what it's done is it's always going to B23, and then this is B4, and the next one will be B5, and the next one will be B6, but the dollar signs will always keep it at the B23 when you do your autofill. Over here, I want to take whatever I have here and square it. Oh, I don't want a number that big, so I'm going to go over here, make sure they're both numbers, and let's, sorry, click drag and I want that to be two decimal places. Actually we'll do it three. Alright and click drag it down take that cell make it fit a little bit better and then the final thing I have to do is find the sum so I type in sum parentheses close parentheses enter and that is my something. Enter. Boom. Alright. So there's the sum of my deviation squared. Now to calculate my standard deviation, I take the square root, SQRT, of my deviation squared summed divided by my number of deviations, close parentheses, enter and that is my standard deviation and if my data falls within 68% plus 68 plus or minus that number from my median, that sounded really confusing and wrong, my mean is 9.4. My data to be normalized must fall within 9.4 plus or minus 3.7 and if it does, if the bulk of my data falls in that range, then my data is what is considered to be normalized. So the final thing I need to do is um, go through, and I want you to actually define what these terms mean. So in order to do that, I have to have a spot to do it. I'm going to do it right here next to the mean. And I want to take a couple of cells, because you're gonna, it's going to take a few words. I don't want this one to be super big, so I'm going to highlight like five cells, and I'm going to hit merge, and that's going to take those cells and merge it into one. I'll hit wrap text, and that way if I fill up more space, It'll wrap the text for me on around. And then I basically am, want you to do that with all of these. And we're going to take that and delete it. And actually, I can take that whole row, delete it, and take that and merge it. And what I want you to do is not type in gibberish, but actually type in the definitions of mean, median, mode, range, in, and standard deviation. So that's what's supposed to be right there where that gibberish is in place. Next, I just need to do some formatting. I want that to be bordered. I want that to be up here where it says all borders. 
and we'll do a little border around that. And that's the basic formatting, and all we have left to do now is to put it in a histogram, which will be the second video.